Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace and this is episode one of five on our series this week on oceans. All of them, all the oceans, all over the world. Please subscribe for more Test Tube Plus so that you can get us in your inbox all week. And also check us out over on iTunes. You can subscribe there if you'd rather have an audio podcast of this series. You can get all five of them all at once. It's pretty awesome. So this week we're gonna talk about why the oceans are important to us, what we don't know about them, what we do know about them, how we are currently using them, and even whether or not we can save them. But first, thank you everybody, because we are hitting 200,000 subscribers today. Or today when we're recording this. It's super awesome. I love you guys. Thank you so much for subscribing and commenting and sharing these videos with your friends. That's why we do this. So thank you so much. Prayer hands emoji, high five emoji, little tongue out the side emoji. But now ocean emoji, let's talk about the oceans. So how big are the oceans? They're big. I mean, really big. And what is in them? We'll get to that. So first, the oceans are huge. They are 71% of Earth's entire surface. We are a blue planet, not a green or brown or other planet. We are a blue planet. Technically, even though people talk about sailing the seven seas, we have five oceans. The Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Southern Ocean, which is the newest, we'll get to that, and also the big guy, the Pacific Ocean. For many years, the world only had four oceans oceans. But in the year 2000, the International Hydrographic Organization established the Southern Ocean. They determined that its limits were all water below 60 degrees south. Some of that water, by the way, is frozen, but it's a pretty huge part of the Earth. So that puts it the second smallest ocean, but still a lot of space. So the Arctic Ocean is 2.8% of the Earth's surface. The Southern Ocean is 4% of the Earth's surface. The Indian Ocean is 13.4% of the Earth's surface. The Atlantic, which is pretty big, is 15% of the Earth's surface. The Pacific is 30.5% of the Earth's surface. It's huge. Almost a third of our planet is the Pacific Ocean. And in case you're wondering in terms of measurement, that is 1.87% quintillion gallons. It's a lot of water. 7,000 trillion liters for those in the SI system. So inside of these oceans, obviously, there's all sorts of life. The marine life relies a lot on a pretty big part of the ocean, and that is salt. Salt is huge in the ocean. I mean, it's actually dissolved into the ocean, so it's not literally huge, but ocean salinity can actually vary drastically from place to place. Ocean water contains tons of different mineral salts. It's not all the same salt. Inside of ocean water, there's obviously sodium, there's chloride, sulfate, magnesium, calcium, potassium, bicarbonate, and bromide salts. These salts enter the ocean through the rivers because all of this water is raining down onto the land and it slowly erodes and runs all the way into the ocean, picking up salt along the way from all of these rocks that it passes over. When the water passes over those rocks, it picks up these little minerals and then deposits them into the ocean. Now it builds up in the oceans because the only way water can leave the ocean, because it can't flow uphill, is through evaporation. And that leaves the salt behind. So eventually, over billions of years, the ocean becomes salty. And salt water is great for marine life. There's a reason that marine life is super diverse and there's so much stuff in there. There's up to a million species in the seas, we think. 25% to 80% of the species in the oceans still need to be described. We don't actually know a lot about them. We are using computer models to guess at how much there is out there based on what we've found so far. But when a scientist says things need to be described, it means that they think they're there, they just haven't grabbed onto one and been able to get a good look at it. In 2007, a member of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, also known as UNESCO, we are never going to say that on the show again, I promise. We'll just say UNESCO. His name was Ward Appletons. He led a European team to expand the efforts of creating a list of sea life to encompass all of the world's marine species. Surprisingly, this had not been done. It was a huge undertaking. Appleton's and his team contacted more than 250 world experts on marine life, and they cataloged all of the world's known ocean species and found that there was actually a surprising number of duplicate species. Because, see, when there's a child that's born, as Appleton said, you need to go to City Hall and you need to register the name of that baby and say, hey, there's a new baby born, so everybody knows. But 
when there's a new species found, all you got to do is publish a paper. And if people aren't reading every paper, some duplicates are bound to happen. So as of late 2012, the team had cataloged 226,000 species, excluding marine bacteria. Another 65,000 are waiting to be described at museums and collections. So we have one, we just haven't you know, written a paper about it yet. And they used a computer simulation and a model to determine that there are between 700,000 and 1 million species living in the oceans as of now. The database that they created, where you can look up all of this stuff, is the World Register of Marine Species, cleverly titled Worms. So silly. And as Appleton said, it's in our nature that we want to know what exists on Earth. We want to know what's out there in our oceans. 71% of our entire planet is the ocean. And there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about it. We're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe and come back to Test Tube Plus so that you can learn more about our oceans because that's what we're here for this week. Also, make sure you go down into the comments and let us know how you feel about the ocean. Do you live near it? Do you prefer the oceans or the mountains? Do you like going to the beach? Tell us a little bit about your experience sharing your life with the ocean. And also, make sure you come find us on Twitter. You can find the show at Test Tube and you can find me at Trace Dominguez. I'll see you tomorrow. Wow.